Welcome guys to the fifth episode of the first section of the chess. In here, we're going to take care of creating a piece of UI so when we lose or when we win, we can reset the game. We also make sure to, um, boop, 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 as you can see here, do a condition in case our king dies. So if I just delete that king, take a couple of turns, I kind of suck at chess. Um, we see this piece of UI over here. We can decide to reset, and this is going to reset the whole board, the pieces on the side, they're gone, everything here is gone as well. And in general, we just make our board look better just by doing a little bit of adjustment uh, with what we had in the package. That's it. That's what we do this episode. It's a fairly simple one. Do note, however, that we don't have um, we don't have prevention on on checking. So basically, here. I can actually put my king there without the game telling me that I can't because technically I could die off this bishop right here. So we still don't have that. It's something we're going to have in the second section. Actually, that's what we start with in the second section. So if you'd like to see that, make sure you hit subscribe because we are going to start releasing this video or I'm going to start making this video as soon as we hit 8000 subscribers. So please go ahead and drop a like, share with your friend and subscribe. Other than that, we're good. I'll see you in the video. Cheers. All right, so in this one, we're implementing the turn mechanic, but also we're implementing a piece of UI that will let us reset the game in case we win or we lose. So that being said, we're going to jump right into the code. This one is quite a simple one. We're going to go and implement the turn mechanic. To do so, I'll be headed at the very top of my script here under the chessboard.cs and I'll add a new boolean, that boolean will be called is white turn. Now with that in mind, um, we, we know where to toggle this. So we're going to toggle this to on in the awake statement. So here, is it the white turn? Yes. Okay, then it's equal to true. And we do that in the awake. Now the other place where we're going to switch this on and off is of course when we do a valid move. So let's look for the valid move, which should be under the move to. And when we're doing move to, we do position single piece, return through, yep. And if we did a valid move, then we can go ahead and say is white turn is equal to is not white turn. This way we can just swap the boolean. Now, if you guys remember when we made our update function, when we were to select an object or a piece, so roughly around here, we left this piece of code over here. Is it our turn? It's time for us to actually start coding this. So it's quite a simple one. We have to grab the, the piece that we're currently looking at dragging. So this one right here, this just piece. And we're going to say, if this one dot team is equal to zero and it's our turn, so is white turn, then we go forward. Now let's actually wrap all of this up inside a set of parentheses. So we can also do the same for the black team. So if this or this. So you're going to see here that I wrap this up in parentheses because both of these conditions, so the team zero and also is white turn, both of these has to be true for one of these two to pass. So we've did it for the white team. Now for the black team, we're going to say the team has to be one and is white turn has to be false, just like so. And I believe that's all we need to implement the turn mechanic. I mean, we already had everything in there. so. Um, quite simple stuff. So is it the white turn? Yes. Is it the black turn? No. So I can't pick any of these pieces up. So if I am to, for example, take the king, put it here, then once the king is dropped, I can then move these pieces and I can defeat the king if I wish. And that's what we're going to be looking to do in, um, in the next part of this. We're going to be looking at um, finding a death condition, finding a win and lose condition, which at the moment, um, for the very first section, this condition will be, is the king dead? If the king is dead, then we're going to show the reset screen, show the uh, victory screen and do that stuff. Now in the next section, the section number two, where we tackle um, complex moves, special moves, that will only occur when we are put under checkmate. But here there is no checkmate uh, prevention. You can put the king in front of the queen and, and you know, there's no, no one stopping you from doing that. So it's not something that we'll, uh, we'll tackle right now, but it's something that we will tackle eventually. So just make sure you subscribe to the channel and keep up to date. That being said, let's have a look at where we actually kill pieces. So I believe that's inside of the move to right here. 
and that's it. So when one of these piece die, let's go ahead and let's say if the piece, the OCP in that case, the one that's dead, if the type is equal equal to king, so type of king, let's do, I'm going to call this one checkmate for later on, but um, basically checkmate will take care of displaying the screen that says, hey, you win or hey, you lost. Now, the person who wins in this case, if the, the white king goes down, it is going to be the, um, the, the black team in this case, so number one. We'll do the same exact thing down here, but that's the white team winning right here. This function, checkmate, I'm actually going to put it in a different section. So I'll say private void, I'll say um, checkmate, private void checkmate int the team. Now when the checkmate function is called, I'm also going to display a piece of UI. So I'll say display victory with again the winning team. And the only thing I'll do right now in checkmate is display victory, like so. And when I do display the victory, I'm just going to, um, I'm just going to turn on a piece of UI and make sure I display that it's the right team winning. Um, on top of that, that piece of UI that we'll make just in a second is going to have two buttons. One for on reset, so on reset button, and also one for on exit. These will come in quite handy on the section number three where we do multiplayer and we have to resync things together. So in our piece of UI, I'm looking to actually create a new canvas. That canvas is going to be um, scaling with screen size and I'm making a game that is 1920 by 1080, so 16 per nine resolution, this one. And with my scaler, my canvas scaler properly adjust, I can then start creating my piece of UI. So I'm thinking about doing very, something very, very simple. So I'll create an image that will act as a background or you know that will act as a victory screen, but that object will be full screen, 200 alpha, and will stretch from both sides. So something like that. And inside of it, I'm gonna go ahead and create two button. Also going to import Text Mesh Pro while I'm here. One of these buttons is going to have the word reset on it. And let's actually scale this up maybe 250 by 50. Very small, let's keep it classy. And okay, so that will do it for this one. That's the reset button, and that is the exit button. So I just duplicate it, I created a new one, it's just you can't see it because it's above it. Let's see, if I move this way, there it is. This one is going to be called exit. And then just before that, I'm going to create a message. So that message is going to be a piece of uh, Text Mesh Pro, and that message Let's make sure that it's stretched on both sides so it's quite big. Doesn't technically have to be, I just want it to be able to, um, to center properly. So paragraph center and I'm going to say white team wins. And that's going to be the white victory. I'm going to paste it and call it the black victory. So copy and paste. Put it on the second spot. That's actually quite useful. So white team wins is the uh, child zero and black victory is the child one. And here I'll just swap the text and it's going to look a mess like this, right? So white team wins, black team wins, reset and exit. Uh, since we're still in this object, I'm going to go on the reset button and add the function we've made earlier. So under hits button, I'll drag and drop the chessboard and choose the on reset button. Same thing for the on exit. All right. Now that this is completed, I'm going to go ahead and make sure everything fits well by creating a vertical layout group. And wow, what a good mess. Okay, now I have to adjust the settings to make this look a little bit better. The child alignment is going to be in the middle center. My spacing is going to be of 25. And I'm going to make sure that we use a child scale for the width and also for the height. 
and we're not going to force xpin on height that's what messed everything up uh, now it's just a matter of, of resetting the values to what we had earlier so um, white victory need a certain width I'm thinking 1920 because it's just going to align itself in the center same thing for this one 1920 and for the buttons I'm thinking about well these value could be good and what's going to happen here is that um, I'm going to toggle on the victory screen, but then I'm going to toggle off both of these things and only one of them is going to be toggled back on depending on who wins. It's a very simple victory screen and I, I, we don't actually need anything else than that. So um, that's the best part. Now, in order to code this, I'm going to need a couple of things at the top of my screen. Uh, script, sorry. And I'll put that under the art stuff for the moment. I'll say private. Hmm. Transformer game object. I'm actually going to do game object victory screen. And then when we win, so on the display victory, what I'm going to do under display victory is just toggle on the screen like so. So do a victory screen set active to true. But not only that, I'm also going to trigger the child be needed as well. So transform get child at the index winning team uh, set active game object set active there we go and just like that we will have the proper display message okay um should we do the on reset not not quite yet i'm gonna go ahead and do the application quit for the on exit button that's a very simple one will change by the way as soon as we uh, make a menu that's in the third section where we have multiplayer but at the moment that's all we need and let's give this a try so Right now, we should have the king die, and when the king dies, one of these screens is going to pop up. Before we go any further, though, we need to go ahead and drag and drop this chessboard, this victory screen, in there, under the uh, chessboard, like so. Okay, so let's give this a try. Hopefully, everything works on the first try. Obviously not, because we forgot to disable the whole thing. So let's go ahead and disable this thing, press play. And then let's sacrifice our king. Black team wins. That's actually accurate. We click on reset. Nothing happens. There's nothing that function just for thus far. And exit doesn't work while we're in the editor. If you were to play with this in um, a build, then exit would just remove the application. Not remove, but delete the application. Not delete, but close the application. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the same thing here on the white side. White team wins. And we have the proper message. All right, that's good. What we're going to be looking to do next is we're going to be looking to um, make the reset button work. So in case we want to play again, we have that option. And then finally, to wrap up the video, we'll just turn around these pieces. Then they start to annoy me. So let's go back in the code for the on reset function. I'm going to go ahead and say victory screen transform get child. We'll do the exact same thing as here, basically. We'll do get child, but instead of doing set active to true, we'll set it to false for both 0 and 1, so both our team. And then finally, take this line of code here, actually no, this one, and set the victory screen to false. So here, we take care of the UI. Then after that, we need to clean up a couple of our game object on the screen. In order to do that, I'll go ahead and I'll clean up the chess piece array. So for x is smaller than tile count x, then we'll do the same thing for y, tile count y, and in here I'll check if the chess piece x, y, that one is not equal to null, then go ahead and destroy its game object. So destroy chess piece x, y dot game object. This way it actually disappear completely from the scene. But then not only we have to do that, but we also have to make sure the chess piece X and Y is set back on null. And that's the game object cleanup that we needed. Not only do we need these, um, but sometimes we have pieces that are no longer part of this list that still exists. And those pieces are the, the dead piece. So I'll go down here and I'll do the same exact thing, but now with the dead white counts and with the dead black counts, we're going to destroy this game object.
the exact same way we did as the one prior. Now, um, after that, we are going to have to wipe the list as well. So to do so, I'll just do a dead whites is equal to a new list. Since we're doing a reset, might as well do that. Or we could do a dot clear. Dot clear could be better, actually. Yeah, let's try that. Same thing for the black one. And do we have everything we need? Now we still have some couple of values that I like to actually put here. Some some field. Field reset. Those fields are the following. So we have the currently dragging is equal to null. Just in case something happens and we click real fast in between the win and the, the other thing. We're going to reset the list of moves as well. And that should be enough technically. Right. Once we're done with all of that, let's go ahead and spawn all the pieces once more. We're going to position all of these pieces once more. And we're going to say that it's the white turn because white always starts in chess. And just like this, we've just created this whole thing. Let's give it a look. On reset just puts us back here and we don't have any weird reference uh, problem thus far, so it's looking great. And uh, yeah, it seems to be seems to be working quite fine. Oh wait, we it's no longer working fine. So what's happening here? So I'm gonna have a look real quick at where this could be the case. We do a clean up, we destroy white, white, black. Oh, here. Oh, here it is, actually. I wasn't that far. <laughs> I just forgot to switch this um, in, in the reset. So, one more test, just to make sure everything works. Uh, that was not the king. That is the king. Thank you. Reset. And it works. Maybe one last thing that I want to fix that is quite annoying me is the fact that this horse is not looking in the right direction. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and position all the uh, black piece to be rotated in such a way that it's looking towards the, uh, the center of the board. And we'll do so in a very, very simple manner, you could say. We're going to open up the chess piece script, which should be right here. We're going to be opening this one up and inside of it, I'm going to create a, uh, a start function. So private void start, and I'm simply going to say my transform rotation um, should be equal to something if I am on the white team, and should be equal to something else if I am on the black team. So let's do. We could do quaternion Euler, and then depending on um, depending on my team, it's actually going to change. So in case we are team zero, so if team is equal equal to zero, we're going to do vector three dot zero, which should be identity, should be the normal uh, rotation we have. And then for the black team, we're going to do a new vector three, zero, 180, and then zero. Let's give this a try. We should see that as soon as the game start. And it works. So the horses are facing the right direction. All right. So I think we're pretty much good to wrap up the first section. The only thing uh, we need to adjust right here is the pawn. The pawn are no longer spawning. We didn't want to have them spawn for the whole purpose of testing things out. So I'm going to go back under my spawn all piece. I'm going to make sure to uncomment this out. Same thing here. And here we go. And actually, before we wrap this up, um, some quick adjustment I just made, as you can see, the board look much better. And that's just because I realized that we had material for these. Uh, I just gave a material randomly to my pieces, but um, um, I went ahead and I redid a little bit of the looks. I'm going to show you how I did it. It's fairly simple. First off, I went on my chessboard and, and instead of having just two material, one for the white team and one for the black team, I went ahead and I created 12 because there's a material for every single one of these pieces, including the occlusion map and also the normal map of these. So if you click on one, we have three different map, night white, night normal, and also night occlusion. And with that in mind, I went ahead and I created 12 different materials. And when I create these, so when I spawn a single piece, this is now my new formula when I assign it. So I first look what team is it. If it's team zero, I add zero. If it's team um, black, I add six to the index and then add the type. Just like we've done earlier, add the top over here. So just like that, I was able to get much better looking pieces. 
Now, um, the one other thing that messed me up is just like these highlight that we've made. I want them to be transparent. So I went in and I just realized that you can actually set a transparent color on this thing. I've told, I totally know why I totally forgot, but if you go over to the hover tile under the base map color, sorry, no, under the color, I can set the alpha value and I put that on 150 so I can see behind it this time. Same thing with the, the, uh, the green one. I put it on 200 and now if we test this out, it looks a little bit better as you can see. So it's a little bit clearer on my end. Now one thing that bothers me still is the shadows. I have a little bit too much shadow so I'm going to go on top of my directional light and actually um, remove the strength of the real-time shadow to something maybe like 0.3 and that's going to make it a little bit better for me to um, well, just to see things right. So with that I think we have a better looking board. Much better looking board. And I think we're good. All right. I hope you enjoy this. If you want to see more, because there's still quite a lot of things to do with this, believe me, we, we have enough content to keep on going for quite a while. But if you want to see the special move, uh, the three special move there is, and also the checkmate and the check prevention, in this case right here, I would not be allowed to position myself here, there, there, there. Yeah, so basically, the only spot I would, I would be able to go is right here, because otherwise, the queen puts me in check. So it's something we're going to be working on in the second section, and I do invite you to join us there. That being said, thank you so much for watching, and I will be seeing you quite soon. Cheers.